Please stand for our hymn of invocation, number 702, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and, from, and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Let not my enemies exult over me. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love for they have been from of old. Let not my enemies exult over me. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you see that of ourselves we have no strength. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear from Holy Scripture. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Lent is from Genesis chapter 32. The same night... He arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and everything else that he had, and Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket. And Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. 
And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with men, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the the name of the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh that is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip on the sinew of the thigh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak together the gradual appointed for the day. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Consider my affliction and my trouble and forgive all my sins. The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Finally, then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us how you ought to live and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness." This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, 
by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for our hymn of the day, number 610. Lord Jesus, think on me. We just sang five times, Lord Jesus, think on me. And you know what? He does. Just like when we sing, Lord, have mercy upon us. He does. When we come to Jesus for mercy, he never says no. When we sing to Jesus for mercy, he never says no. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon us. And he does. Jesus even says, whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. Jesus welcomes your coming to him. And in our gospel today, he does not say no. 
He does not say no to the Canaanite woman, and he does not say no to you. It's rather the reverse. Christ says, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, to the one who knocks, it shall be opened. Now in the past, for several years, I was taught, and I have taught, that God gives three answers to all our prayers. Yes, no, and wait. But we have to, with all of our teachings, no matter how many years that we have looked at, we have to take all these teachings that are ingrained in our head and we have to compare them to the Bible. That is our authority and that is our rule and norm. Does God ever say no to a prayer, especially in the times of asking for mercy? Or, like Jesus in our gospel, does God only appear to say no? To a Christian's prayer in faith, you'd be hard-pressed to find where God does, actually says no. Now, he might say, wait, I have something better after you ask him to win the lottery. For the treasures in heaven you shall inherit are so, or that, and a, a whole lot more. God may not answer your prayer immediately when you ask for healing for your terminal illness, but He can have mercy in so many different ways, can't He? What our Lord has prepared for us is full of yeses. Jesus says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. And prayer, prayer after all, is an exercise. It's an exercise of faith. In your prayer, in your faith, God can and does make it appear that he's denying you. It appears that he's saying no, but he isn't. It only looks that way. A Canaanite woman with a demon-suffering daughter comes to Jesus, crying for mercy. and It appears as if Jesus was refusing that mercy. It looks like Jesus was saying no. But nowhere in our gospel was Jesus saying no. But Jesus surely made it look like he was. Why? Why was Jesus testing her so? So that, quite simply, Jesus could make her faith visible and then call her faith great. How did Jesus make her faith visible? By only appearing to refuse mercy. And, see, and since Jesus answered her finally that her faith was not only good, it was great, we should examine what her great and genuine faith was all about. This woman's faith, first of all, was in the Jesus that's in the Bible. Faith is not of our own invention. You don't get to choose what you believe and what you don't about Jesus. You don't get to select your flavors that you do like and you don't like in the Bible. First comes God's word. Then comes faith from it. And the Bible makes it crystal clear that the only true great faith is faith in the true Jesus. The biblical one. And this woman, who is a Gentile, cried out something very biblical. 
Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. The Canaanite woman, she didn't grow up learning the Bible. But she certainly appealed to the biblical Messiah, this mother of a suffering daughter, did not come up with her own Jesus. Nor did she assume the Jesus that's portrayed on television. She confessed the Jesus she knew that originated in Scripture. Faith receives what Scripture says. Scripture teaches of the only Jesus Christ the one foretold by the prophets and the one witnessed to by the apostles. True faith is bound to the Bible. And true faith is bound through the Bible to the one and only Jesus Christ, the Son of David, the one and only Savior. And this woman's faith seeks mercy. It's what faith does. Faith seeks mercy. Faith does not seek inwardly to find some greatness of faith mustered up all on its own. And even the woman did not say, I have great faith. Faith knows its need for mercy, and it seeks it. If you do not see any need for mercy... Lo and behold, you have no faith. Faith completely agrees with everything that God says. That's why you say, Amen. Now, it's true, anyone can agree with words, and at the same time, not care much about it. But faith Faith sees what it needs, and faith knows what it needs. And faith always needs the mercy, the compassion of Jesus Christ. Now, this mother, her daughter, was demon-possessed. And in those days, when God became flesh in Jesus, the devil unleashed every demon in the arsenal. Every demon was unleashed in an all-out attack on humanity. Such an attack of demon possession had never been seen before. Satan was fearful of his impending destruction. For the seed of the woman was about to crush the head of the serpent. And all the demons of hell manifested themselves. This woman's poor daughter was a victim. Her daughter had no control, even over her own body. An evil power, much stronger than hers, had control. She needed mercy from Christ. We need mercy from Christ. We also cannot free ourselves from the evil within. And... We cannot defend ourselves from the evils outside and around us that are ready to break in at any moment. At any temptation, at any test, at any trial, we need help. We need mercy from Christ. And that's what faith seeks. Faith pleads for it. Faith relies on God's mercy in Jesus Christ. But you'll also notice that the Canaanite woman's great faith comes out of great humility. Remember that with your need for mercy, pride can be very destructive. Jesus crushes any pride this woman has. Not because he was being mean or vicious, but out of his deep love for her. Jesus had heard her and ignored her. Everyone heard her. 
and Jesus ignored her. That's humiliating. And then it became, well, downright embarrassing. So much so that the disciples came and begged him, saying, send her away, for she is crying out after us. Jesus appears to deny her request and say no, saying that he was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus didn't even speak these words directly to her. He said it to the disciples and anyone within earshot, one of which was the Canaanite woman. How humiliating. And since she was not of that house of Israel, it seemed, she is being excluded. Jesus was not sent to help her, so it seems it was humiliating for her to be excluded. But her faith bore onward. Lord, help me. A prideful faith would have said, just forget it. I did not come here to be insulted. I'll seek help elsewhere. But true faith does not find any support in pride. My friends, do you see the acceleration of humiliation within the gospel? The more Jesus humiliated her and tested her, the more she clung to her faith. So Jesus finally addresses the woman directly. And his answer appears to be another denial. It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Well, if that's not the crowning insult, she's a dog. She came pleading for mercy and is fully humiliated. Any sliver of pride that she had left was demolished. Pride was gone. With any and all pride removed, what remained? Great faith. Why? She clung to the very word of God. Faith clings to the very word of God. Faith savors every word of Christ and never lets go. Faith does not trust in some sort of vague hope on its own. Faith doesn't pray a petition up to God for a particular desire and then hope that God will approve and grant the wish. No. Faith takes the words that God speaks and holds them up to God and says, here is what you said. Here is what you promised. I desire no more and I desire no less. Your your promise, O Lord, is your promise. And I have no pride. I'll be a dog. Who cares? Call me any name you want, God. Insult me. Indeed, so what? My pride is demolished. I'll be a dog. And if that's what you say I am, I'll hold you to your word. Yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. If all I get is some crumbs of your grace and mercy, it's enough for me. The Canaanite woman's faith doesn't look around to see who else is sitting at the master's table. Great faith doesn't even look around to see if anyone else is being called the dog. Faith just sees its need for mercy. Your faith sees in the biblical Jesus the very mercy it seeks. Pride is to be cast aside. Pride is to be humiliated. The great faith that remains simply clings to the promises of God in the Bible. The words of God. They reveal his promises. They reveal his thoughts. They reveal his desires. 
The Bible can be summed up as such. God said it. That settles the matter. Nothing else outside of the Bible settles the matter. Only God's words can settle any matter of faith. Jesus never said no to the Canaanite woman. And Jesus does not say no to you. But he will test your faith. It only appears that he's saying no. It only appears that he is ignoring you. It only appears to us that he's playing some sort of game. But he's not. We are being tested. We are being disciplined. We are being taught. And the gospel has taught us today that faith is faith in the biblical Jesus. Faith seeks mercy from him. Faith comes out of humility. And faith clings to every word that God says. God's word teaches us that true faith is impossible apart from the gospel. The gospel of the obedient son. The gospel of the suffering servant. The death of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And the gospel of the resurrected Jesus Christ. Faith is centered upon Christ. Why do we look to Scripture? Not because we find salvation, but because we want to find out who Jesus is. We don't look to popular culture to find out who Jesus is. We look to the Bible. Not because that we think that in the Bible we have eternal life. We look to the Bible because it bears witness about Jesus Christ. And through these words, we find his mercy. Promised by Christ alone. Faith does not and cannot trust itself. Faith trusts Jesus Christ. Just like the faith of the Canaanite woman who did not focus upon her own faith. She simply trusted in Jesus Christ. After all, Jesus is the main character in our gospel today. Not the Canaanite woman. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus saved her daughter. Jesus drove out the demon and set her free. Jesus Christ had mercy on the Canaanite woman and her daughter. Earlier in today's service, we cried out, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Does Jesus ever say no? Does Jesus ever ignore us with that cry? No. Christ bore our sins by obedience to the point of death, even death on a cross. And he delivers us from sin. He forgives us. And he sees our sin no more. It's gone. And we no longer see ourselves the eternal punishment for our sins. There's another life, my friends. There is indeed a better life. For in the forgiveness of sins, we only see he in whom we trust. We only see Jesus who was lifted up on a cross, the center of faith, the center of scripture. And any evil that we think might destroy us is itself destroyed. God forgives all our sins for the sake of Jesus Christ on the cross. And we simply take him at his word. Amen. The service continues with a prayer of the church. Please stand as you're able.
Lord, you gave Abraham the promise of many descendants. Give us faith that we may delight in this promise, delivered through the ages and kept in Christ our Savior. Equip us with your spirit to be bold and unwavering witnesses, carrying your name and your gospel to every place and people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, through patriarchs and prophets, you spoke your word. Bless all pastors, that they may preach and teach faithfully. Raise up many new laborers for church work vocations, and bless them as they prepare for this service in our colleges and seminaries. O Lord, we pray that you bless David Clark and family as they continue their vic his vicarage. Give us ears to hear and hearts to imitate their faith and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our Father, you have adopted us into your heavenly family as brothers of your Son, Jesus Christ. Teach us, after the example of Jacob and Esau, to overcome brotherly strife in persistent prayer and with humility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we know of your deep love for us, and you have called us to be your children. Deepen the love of children for their parents and parents for their children. Strengthen fathers and mothers in their vocations that they may raise their children in the way that they should go. Hear the prayers of those who long for families. Lord, sustain Aaron, Samantha, and Kendra, and all expectant mothers and their little ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, you sent forth your own Son to heal and give everlasting life. By your word and spirit, lift up your people from their sorrows and deliver them according to your gracious will. Hear us, we pray, especially for Kay, Beverly, Dale, Helen, Steve, Kathy, Curtis, Paula, Rosie, Bill, Cecily, Teresa, Carlton, Tom, Susan, Ginger, Norm, Carol, Steve, Laverna, Martha, Carl, Gladys, Carol, Joe, Linda, Charlene, the family and friends of Myrna Ullman, and the family and friends of Janet Hess. Sustain them in their afflictions. Comfort them in the hour of death and raise up the dead according to your gracious promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, your Son has set his table among us. Here he gives his flesh as food and his blood as drink to forgive our sins and nourish our faith. Give us your Spirit that we may approach this sacrament with faith and receive with repentant hearts the benefit of his holy communion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we implore you by your Holy Spirit to strengthen our hearts and confirm our faith and hope in your grace and mercy. Although we have reason to fear for the sake of our conscience, our sin, and our unworthiness, let us nevertheless hold fast, like the woman of Canaan, to your grace. In every trial and temptation, let us find you a present help and refuge through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we worship our Lord with our offering. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead 
and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. At your command, Abraham was prepared to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice on the mountain. Yet, in mercy, you provided a ram as a substitute. We give you thanks that on Calvary, you spared not your only son, but sent him to offer his life as a ransom for many. As we eat and drink his body and blood, grant us, like Abraham our father, to trust in your promise now fulfilled in Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We remain standing for our closing hymn, number 733, O God, our help in ages past.